In this lesson, we're going to be talking about WAN protocols or wide area network protocols. Now, there are several protocols that are used for wide area networks. And what I'm really talking about when I'm talking about wide area networks is the connections that are used when you're talking about, for example, your internet service provider. Any network provider uses these really large connections or really large pipes in order to transmit information. And there are protocols, of course, that are used to get that data from one point to another. You may think of the internet as this big sort of amorphous cloud. What it really is, is a connection of pipes or tubes. These pipes or tubes, of course, use protocols in order to get data back and forth. And one of the protocols that is used an awful lot is synchronous optical networking or SONNET. Sonnet is an optical networking protocol, of course, because it's called synchronous optical networking. It's interesting because rather than the headers and then the payload, with Sonnet you end up with headers interleaved with the payload. So you can see here, this is a Sonnet frame or STM1 frame for synchronous transport module level one. And there's an STM1 frame and there's some other diagrams here. I'm not gonna get into a lot of details about how Sonnet works, primarily because they don't actually have a packet capture. Not surprisingly, these kind of packet captures are difficult to get your hands on. I don't actually have a packet capture to show you what it really looks like, but I did want to touch on it because it is a really important protocol because it gets used a lot. Now, another one that gets used a lot is ATM, and I'm not talking about an automated teller machine. I'm talking about asynchronous transfer mode. Asynchronous transfer mode, or ATM, is interesting because it was actually developed in the late 1980s to handle ISDN. ISDN was going to be this great service that the phone company was going to offer. They was going to support high capacity, great quality voice. So ATM was actually developed to meet the needs of ISDN. And ATM, as I mentioned, was interesting because rather than variable length packets, you end up with fixed length cells. They don't use frames. Now, other wide area networking protocols call their data units frames, and ATM calls them cells. And one of the things about ATM that's kind of interesting is they're really small sized cells. So you've got a five byte header and a 48 byte payload. So that gives you a 53 byte cell, and it doesn't matter what size data you've got, it's always going to be a 53 byte cell. So in the case where your data doesn't end up having enough to actually fill something that's a 53-byte cell, let's say you actually had something that was 486 bytes, for example. I'd end up having 10 cells, and then I'd have a little bit of extra data, so I'd have 6 bytes that didn't fit into the 10 cells that I had already sent. So what ends up happening is they have to pad that cell out. So I've got 53 byte cells with ATM. Another protocol that's perhaps more common, particularly with smaller networks, is frame relay. And frame relay is actually kind of a cloud. You can see here in this diagram, we've got the network provider, typically the phone company, provides you this frame relay cloud and you connect your equipment to their frame relay switches and then they handle all of the communication about who you're communicating with and who's part of your frame relay network and there could be lots of different businesses that are using the same equipment here in this frame relay cloud but the phone company actually handles who gets to see what data. So theoretically, you don't have to worry about anybody else being able to see what it is you're doing. And it's private in that sense because they're separating it out within the equipment. So Frame Relay is another type of wide area networking protocol. And they use things like protocol data units. 
and you can see what a protocol data unit here would consist of. So every frame relay protocol data unit would consist of a flag field, an address field, an information field, and a frame check sequence. So this is the bit that would get thrown on by the equipment before it got thrown out to the frame relay network. It would add all of these header bits on before it sent it out. Now, frame relay also has the ability to do congestion control, as you see here. All of this stuff is actually handled inside of the network. This is not something, again, that you would typically ever see because it would be on the other side of the equipment that connects you to the internet or whatever provider you're connecting to for a network provider. So we've got a number of different wide area network protocols. They are typically used for internet connections, although they're not exclusively used for internet connections. You could actually set up a wide area network between multiple sites you would just go to your phone company or a network provider and they would drop a line at your place of business and then drop another line at another location. And you would use these protocols like Sonnet or ATM or Frame Relay, depending on what your needs were and the type of networking you were doing, whether they were doing fiber or whether it was copper based from the phone company. Sometimes the method of transmission affects the protocol that's being used. Obviously, you're not going to run Sonnet over Copper, for example. So that's just a little bit about wide area networking protocols.